Hi everyone, I'm Jean Cheiran from Brazil and I'm going to present the paper comparing physical and immersive VR prototypes for evaluation of an industrial system user interface. I'm a professor at the Federal University of Pampa and a PhD student at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. The other authors, Laura Torres, Antonio Silva, Gabriele Souza, Luciana Nedel, Anderson Maciel and Dante Baroni, are students or professors at the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. Technologies and principles of virtual reality have evolved over the last 50 years. They have been used for human training since the beginning, for instance, for military training with vehicle simulators and for developing pilots' skills through flight simulators. Although there is enough evidence that such training really helps to develop or to enhance users' skills, it's crucial to guarantee that those simulations are suitable and safe for experiencing by measuring their quality. This is done by user testing and other evaluation techniques such as inspections and walkthroughs. User experience, as known as UX, is a wide concept defined by ISO as, quote, the user's perceptions and response that result from the use and or anticipated use of a system, product, or service, end quote. It covers usability, accessibility, and other more personal components, being affected by three key factors, the system, the user, and the context of use. Speaking of evaluation, for sure it's possible to evaluate UX of a simulation system. However, we didn't find studies that report on the evaluation of a complex system through its VR simulation, especially in an industrial context that relies on heavy machinery. We think that's crucial to clarify that we are not talking about evaluating the quality of a simulation. We are interested in evaluating the final system in a very realistic scenario using a virtual reality prototype to simulate complex and expensive hardware. It's like to evaluate a helicopter physical cockpit through an immersive high-end VR simulation to find usability issues and to assess user experience, as it was the real helicopter. This would be particularly useful for many companies. For example, the driver's feelings and the performance could be measured with low-cost immersive VR prototypes in the automotive industry. But the problem here is that we have no evidence that the overall emotions of the users are going to be the same in both the simulation and the system. And it's also true for the user's performance and the system's effectiveness. Also, we don't know if the usability problems faced by the users will be equally discovered even in the case of identical interfaces. So, since we are not sure if the final system and the VR simulation have a direct correlation regarding UX, we are interested in assessing the feasibility and of carrying out user studies for interface evaluation by comparing a physical system to its VR simulation. Once this study was performed in the context of an ongoing project of a big petroleum company, we are not able to undergo user tests in the final system yet. So, our first step is to carry out user testing in physical prototypes and immersive VR prototypes, the current phase of the project, to gather evidence for further investigation with the final system. These are the research questions of our study. The first one is our major question, while the others are more specific queries. Is it the same to undergo user tests in a desktop system or in a simulated system in VR? How does it affect the user performance? How does it affect the usability assessment and the usability issues finding? How does it affect the user experience? Should the experimenter mind about cyber sickness? So, in this study, we aim to evaluate the feasibility of carrying out studies for user-based evaluation of industrial system interfaces using immersive VR simulation. We also create a physical prototype and an immersive VR prototype of the same system. We performed user tests and we observed participants, logged their performance and collected their opinions. Here we present some context of the system under evaluation the project of a robot for unclogging petroleum pipelines, called Anelida Project. 
A floating production storage and offloading vessel is designed to receive oil from a subsea template. The oil flows from deep water wells through a pipeline into the vessel processing system. From time to time, a pipe becomes clogged with hydrates and the flow stops. So, a quite complex operation begins to figure out the exact location of the obstruction and to replace the clogged pipe section. This is a very expensive and complicated operation. The Anelida project aims to create a robot that crawls inside the pipeline to find out the obstructions and to unclog the pipes. The robot is continuously controlled and monitored by an operator on the vessel. It's a cheaper and less complex operation, but the entire process takes a while since the pipeline is miles long and the robot moves very slowly inside the pipes. Thus, the entire operation could take hours or even days. The operator can move the robot back and forth, but most of the time it just moves forward. Once the robot reaches an obstruction, the operator starts the unclogging action and the robot carries out a process to remove the hydrate barrier. This unclogging could be necessary more than once in a single operation because many obstructions can form in different places. Finally, once the entire operation is completed, the robot is pulled back to the vessel by the operator and the oil flow is restored. This is the Anelida graphical user interface. On the left side of the image, we can see the, in fact, vermiform robot rendering. And on the right side of the image, we can see the monitoring gauges and some control buttons. This is the prototype of the physical console used in this study. From the left to the right, there are speed and direction controls, graphical user interface commands, unclogging controls, and overall commands. We measured five things in our study. The user performance in each task scenario through the lapse at time, the perceived usability through the system usability scale that's a well-known questionnaire for measuring perceived efficiency, effectiveness, and satisfaction, the overall user experience through the user experience questionnaire that covers attractiveness, perspicuity, efficiency, dependability, stimulation, and novelty impressions, the cyber sickness symptoms through the classic simulator sickness questionnaire, and the usability problems found by direct observation of the users. The experimenter has written down those issues during each test. The experiments were developed according to the recommendations of the Ethics Committee on Research of the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul, and they took place in a VR lab of the same university. Also, the experiment was entirely done before COVID-19 pandemic. The picture presents the overall setup of the experiment with three monitors and a metal frame supporting three Vicon Vero tracking cameras, used for tracking users' fingers. It's also possible to see the physical console prototype on the table. We also used 3D printed fingers markers that allowed the user's fingers tracking through the Vicon system and the HTC Vive headset. This is the example of a test session. The participant has given us the permission to use his image. Here, the user is performing a task using the immersive VR simulation and we can see the markers around his fingers the index finger, and the thumb for tracking the grip action. The physical and the virtual version of the console are almost identical, except for their colors, the size of the labels, the backlit buttons of the virtual version, and the tracking plate of the physical version. The tracking plate in the upper image is used for matching the position of both console versions in space, so when the user aims to press a button in VR, they can also touch the corresponding physical button by passive haptics. The position of the virtual monitors also matches the position of the physical ones. Obviously, both the physical and the virtual tables have the same height. Now we present the simulation of a test session. It's not a real one and it's just a fraction of a test. This video has no sound. Since it was sent along the paper in the CGI submission phase, the name of the Petrobras company was omitted. Here we can see the virtual world and the virtual representation of users' fingers, index and thumb, 
by color red virtual capsules. The leftmost monitor is just left blank because it should have a piece of software that is not finished yet. It's also possible to see the vermiform robot rendering while the user speeds it up by using the slider. The rightmost monitor shows the gauges for each system status and it also contains control widgets. We created two different system versions in two different scenarios for this experiment. The system versions are the physical prototype and the immersive VR prototype. The two scenarios have distinct events and tasks to be performed by the users, so the missions are very different from each other even though the system is the same. Combining the system versions and the task scenarios, we have four different configurations. For instance, one participant, the purple one at the top, would try first the scenario 2 in immersive VR and after that the scenario 1 in the physical system. This pattern was repeated after the fourth user. We had 16 participants, 13 males, from 22 to 32 years old, with a mean of 26.1. Two participants are high school graduates, 10 hold a bachelor's degree, and 4 hold a master's degree. Eight participants use virtual reality less than once in a month. The other eight use VR more often, so it's not something new for anyone. We decided to present the detailed results together with the answers to our research questions to preserve their contexts. Since the first question is broader than the others, we also decided to approach the questions in the reverse order. First of all, we will discuss cyber sickness. Could it be a problem? Before anything else, it's worth mentioning that our experiment was done in a stable and calm context. The participants were set, the elements of the scenario didn't move, and there were only slow head movements. By and large, it will be enough to reduce cyber sickness to minor symptoms while using immersive VR. In fact, we didn't detect statistical significant differences between the sample means when comparing the SSQ scores after the first scenario. For that, we calculated the difference of the SSQ scores before and after the exposition to the immersive VR prototype, and also before and after the exposition to the physical prototype. It's expected a difference near zero when we compare the pre-exposure score to the post-exposure score after using the desktop system, since the virtual elements are minimal, only the robot rendering. It's also expected a difference higher than zero when we compare the pre- and the post-exposure scores after using the immersive VR system. However, the differences are not big enough to be significant. Some possible causes for these are the features of our sample, since some participants experience VR frequently and they could be resistant to cyber sickness, or our stable immersive VR environment could not contain enough cyber sickness inducer elements, or our sample is just too small and even if the difference exists, we are unable to detect it. On the other hand, we do have detected difference in cyber sickness symptoms when users switch from physical to immersive and vice versa. This difference was expected once the symptoms tend to worsen when users change from desktop to VR and also tend to better when users change from VR back to desktop as they recover. However, we really didn't expect that the differential between SSQ scores would be near zero when users switch from desktop to immersive VR. At least, we would look for numbers similar to those in a pre-exposure to VR scenario, but clearly is not the case here. Thus, it means that somehow trying the physical prototype before trying the immersive VR has reduced overall cyber sickness symptoms, and an additional Pearson correlation analysis has corroborated that. We speculated that it happens in our context due to the increased concentration on tasks and the reduction of head movements, since the user had already experienced the physical prototype and so they knew where widgets and buttons were. So, we haven't detected significantly worse cyber sickness symptoms 
either on the physical or the immersive VR prototype. There is also evidence to support that performing tasks first on the physical prototype could reduce cyber sickness symptoms while performing tasks on an immersive VR simulation of the same system. Next, we discuss the differences of user experience regarding the prototypes. Even though we haven't noticed any significant differences in any user experience factor, it's important to clarify them. The attractiveness is just how appealing the system is as a whole. The pragmatic factor is related to perspicuity, control, and efficiency, and it's closely related to usability. Although all the users had faced some interaction noises, they were not enough for decreasing the UX score. Finally, the hedonic dimension is related to novelty and stimulation. Even though Varick and other authors reported differences on the hedonic factor in similar studies, all the participants of our research are used to experiencing VR, so there isn't a novelty value to anyone. In our next question, we discuss the usability evaluation with regard to scoring and finding problems. Not surprisingly, we haven't found any significant difference regarding usability scores. Since no difference has been observed through the user experience questionnaire on the pragmatic dimension, it's expected that the system usability scale also present no difference. As a matter of the utmost importance, we were able to detect the same usability issues on both system versions. It provides some evidence to support the claim that there is no real difference in the perceived usability. Unfortunately, we recorded the issues only in two major pools, one for the immersive VR prototype and another for the physical one. Because of that, we were unable to compare the issues either by user or task scenario. Our second to last question is about time to complete a task scenario. Here we replace the student's t-test for the Welch's t-test because the time samples had presented an equal variance. As expected, the users took more time to fulfill the task scenarios in VR. It sounds reasonable that interaction in VR is lower than interaction in physical desktop systems, since the user representation is limited, through fingers in our case, and the user's movements are usually less precise. Ultimately, we have this final question. Is the same to carry out user tests in a physical desktop system and in a simulated immersive VR system? Our case study suggests that the answer is yes to some extent. This is because we collected evidence that, for systems like ours, we are able to find the same usability problems on both versions. UX and usability scores in one version are indistinguishable from the others. Cyber sickness is not a problem, and user performance is slower using the interaction techniques we chose. We would like to highlight some significant limitations of our work. First, the small number of participants for sure reduced the statistical power of our statistical tests. Also, since no participant is unexperienced in VR, it could restrict our contributions. Some technical issues could have affected the experiment too, like inaccuracies in matching physical and virtual elements, tracking problems that caused users' fingers to flicker in VR, quality problems of our physical prototype, users' VR representation through just some fingers reducing the sense of presence, and low HMD resolution that reduced readability in VR. The next steps of this research include increasing the number of participants and choosing a more heterogeneous sample, using other VR interaction methods like VR controllers instead of passive haptics, comparing the Mercy VR to the final real version of the system, and expanding our tests to other kinds of complex industrial systems. We would like to thank the Brazilian government agency CAPES for supporting this study. Also, we would like to thank the Brazilian Petrobras Corporation for funding this research through a cooperation project with the Federal University of Rio Grande do Sul. And now it's time for questions.